Hello everyone and welcome to the Dialogues from Silicon Valley. My name is Vlas Lezen and I'm Chief Operating Officer at Silicon Valley Innovation Center. Today we continue our discussions about digital transformation and we have our guest Alejandro Sanchez. Alejandro is an entrepreneur and software engineer. He studied computer science in Pontifica de Salamanca, executive MBA in marketing in AAE and startup internalization in IEC Business School. Founder and CTO of several startups, he is a former employee at Splunk and current employee at Adobe. Teacher in business innovation schools and centers and as well tech advisors and business angel in multiple startups and VC funds. Worked for 19 years in tech and engineering and, and product manager. Specialities are in engineering, M&A, due diligence, tech advisor, and product manager. Alejandro is a speaker in our Leading Digital Transformation program and also a good friend of Silicon Valley Innovation Center. Alejandro, welcome and thank you for taking your time to speak with us today. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure for me. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So uh, let's, let's get started. So as usual, in very conservative, very uh, conversational and very a flowy interview style. So what is the digital transformation to you? Uh, for me, the digital transformation I, in my past experience working for companies like Splunk or Adobe is mainly about building products that the customers love. So you cannot start to do digital transformation if you don't have a product that the customers really need. And later you can decide to innovate. For example, uh, Adobe has Photoshop, Splunk has Splunk Cloud, all these kind of products, uh, they, they, the customers use it because they love the product. So I believe that every company, yeah, in the past, I don't know if you are familiar with the minimal viable product, that is the minimal product that you have to build, but right now I think that the requirements are harder, so you have to make what they call MLB, that is minimal, global product that is the, a product that the customers love. So I think that you cannot start digital transformation if you don't have a product that the customers really love. So on that note, there's always kind of a debate between, you know, different school of thoughts. The ones that say, you know, quoting uh, the, the, for the Henry Ford's quote, although it's not belonging to him, but still people quote that if people would ask me for what they want, they would give, they would tell me they need a faster horse. And then yeah. uh, Steve Jobs always said that, you know, I'll tell you what do you like and you will love it. So how do you think you can balance those things? How do you, how do you balance real innovation of things that people do not even know that they exist? Like think about Airbnb in 2007 and actually fitting that problem that the customer might have? Well, I believe that for most of these cases, the, most of the founders, like the Airbnb founder or, or others, they started with some of the specific problem that they have it and how they solve it for themselves. And sometimes they started with, with nothing. I mean, only asking for the customers, having spreadsheets and doing manually. It's the same example, for example, that Dropbox, that they started with the video on, and well, in that case, it was more about growth and how they, they find the customers on, and implementing new ideas. For example, they were the first doing growth hacking, and that is a technique that, uh, for example, if, if you decide to share your account with another person, we are going to give you more space. So it was a way that, more people start using it. So, so I, I believe like uh, you need to understand very well what are the customer needs, but nowadays because the requirements are more hardened than 10 years ago, uh, you have to, the, the requirements like UX and UI design are, are, are more strict. So you have to, to make a product also that the customers love from the beginning. And you can only do doing a lot of UX research uh, and talking directly with the customer. No, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then, and then in terms of that, so what would you think besides talking to you, to your customers and working on UX, working really focusing on the user experience and user benefit, what do you think are the most important elements of the digital transformation in general when maybe companies looking to do the digital transformation internally? Well, I I put an example before, like uh, a Dropbox, like 
they, they implemented the better delivery uh, for the customers. Uh, and some examples are, for example, like Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Cloud that they have a subscription model. And they knew that the license model was very expensive for the customers. So they decided to, hey, why we don't charge $10 or $20 per month? And if the customers want to continue using our product, they, they do it. Amazon Prime is another good example because you have everything. You have video, music, storage, uh, delivery, everything for only $10. So I believe that the companies are starting to add more value in the subscription model, but uh, one of the most important elements that they are innovating is because they, they change how they deliver the products to the customers. Yeah. I definitely do agree with this. And then in terms in terms of this, right, so how do you actually deliver to the customer and in terms of how you focus? So do you think that you need to be reactive to the market if you're a big company or you need to be a little bit proactive to, to the market? Because I know that the big startups, the big startups or let's say established tech giants are obviously big organizations and they cannot pivot as fast as smaller startups that might be going after like the next shiny thing. So do you think that there is some kind of proof of market, proof of market fit before big companies launch something revolutionary or they should kind of uh, disrupt themselves and go forward with that? Uh, for, for very big companies like Splunk or Adobe, it's really hard to make big changes. And I think that the, the thing because these companies made the big changes because the leaders too. For example, Adobe has been mentioned, the CEO, like the best CEO in the last year. So, and the CFO and other people that were, were very, because all these big companies, uh, you cannot make changes really quickly because you have a board, you have your customers, you are a public company because you make an IPO. So you cannot do things really fast. So how you convince these customers that uh, maybe for example, I can think about Adobe. Adobe is a big company. And, is making a lot of money like 10 years ago, how we moved to a subscription model. So I think that the, 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 the BPs and the CEOs has, has to adopt the leadership because otherwise it's not possible. Because it not will, they, there are many companies that they are very big and they were not able to make the change because the leadership in the, in the top executives were not able to make the change. So for me, it's very important that the company has a good leadership and are able to make changes independently if they are a big company or, or a small company. And but later here we have another challenge, like how you how you get more talent to the company and other things. So you can do very, very different. For example, many big companies, what they do is like they start buying and acquiring other companies because the hiring process is very slow and it's really hard to find good talent. So you have to think about all the agents that you have in the company, the customers, the vendors, the employees, and, and think how you can improve it. When we call about digital transformation, it's more about how you transform your company to make it, to make it more successful. And so on that note, in terms of Pretty, pretty, pretty much what you said is that it starts from the top, but then the whole company has to follow. Uh, the whole company has an ecosystem, meaning that it's employees, it's vendors, it's customers, pretty much everyone. So how can companies, big companies, maybe even if you, if you allow me to call them legacy companies, can create this culture of digital transformation, the culture of innovation within them, even, even let's say if they do have this, uh, this desire to innovate on the very top? Uh, for me, understanding all the agents that they have, for example, customers, vendors, and employees, talk with them and see what they are demanding and understanding them because, for example, uh, Amazon decided that for customers were very important that the delivery was in one day. Even the investors were not agree about that, but he was very focused in the problem that the customers want and they focused on that. So for me, it's very important to talk with these agents and see how you can improve different things. And, and for example, everyone is going to tell you different cases, like for example, employees. Now they want to work from remote, they can work from any location, how we provide VPN access, 
all the knowledge like using Slack, Jira, Confluence, and all the tools that they need. But later the customers are going to demand you something different. Oh, we want delivery in one day, or we want... So I believe that you have to do a lot of customer service and, and trying to improve the process. And later you need uh, all the leadership from the management team to make it possible. It doesn't matter if it's a big or a small company or they have legacy. For legacy, uh, we can talk later about the technology and things like that, but uh, they have to focus first in listening all the agents and, and try to see how they can improve all the process in the company. So on that note, in terms of the sparking that innovation, sparking that digital transformation, is there something that maybe people on the mid to you know maybe high level management can do to spark the digital innovation maybe like not like the c level but like the level below and go, going back to the middle management uh, i believe that the cpo is one of the main agents because the product manager is the person that can talk directly with the customers and can unify business with other areas so i i believe that the cpo is one of the main people in the company that they can do it but later, it depends about the, what you want to change in the company. For example, if you want to do like changing from a license model to a subscription model, maybe the person that is more appropriate to make that change is only the CFO, the, the financial person that is going to give the numbers, so, so the customers and do all the communications because if the customers don't approve it, and you are not going to be able to do the change, and maybe you are going to be very criticized and a lot of different things. So I believe that every part of the digital transformation is going to have uh, one of the main VPs that is going to make the transformation. For example, if we talk about technology, uh, now we don't build products that make only one thing. We decouple and we make, we, we have this idea about having everything with microservices and having the cap on everything. So, for example, the, the CPO or the CTO is going to be the person that is going to initiate that change. So I believe that there are like maybe 20 or 30 different digital transformations that you can do in the company, uh, trying to improve something different and, and it's going to be the leadership for one or two people in the top of the company. If not, it's not going to be possible. I, I, I definitely agree with you because digital transformation and innovation require resources that only the very high people can actually give to actually make it proper and across the board. So uh, kind of continuing on that, on that topic, you mentioned the microservices. So what do you think is the most influential technologies or maybe recommendations in general when it comes to the digital transformation and innovation? And nowadays, everything is moving to the cloud. The customers are using uh, Amazon, Azure, Google Cloud platform. And, and they are moving to technologies like Kubernetes, that this Kubernetes is a container technology. So you decouple, for example, now you are not going to have a big application that does the login, the paychecks, the everything. So you are going to build different services to do only one thing. So you can have multiple teams doing only a specific thing and getting worried about how they scale their service and everything. So nowadays, everything is moving to the cloud. Everything is microservices. Companies are using, they just started with technologies like Docker, now more Kubernetes. And, and other companies like Twitter, they are using a lot of Mesos. And, but all the ideas are the same, it's running everything in microservices and containers and the couple all of this. So this is how companies are doing digital transformation so the business scales faster. Because if not, it's impossible to scale to millions of users. So all the big companies, Splunk, Adobe, Facebook, Twitter, Google, if they don't implement their own technologies to do microservices, they they are using Kubernetes or another technology that they are very popular right now. 
I definitely, I definitely agree. And I also see well, what is interesting is that uh, pretty much everything becomes as a service, right? And that not only just technology, but I also saw actually a constructor similar to other CMS constructors like WordPress or Tilda or whatnot that was built to do the things in the back end. So you can just add, add here, you know, your database, just map it really just in the browser. It will create a graphs, GraphQL or REST API and then we'll talk to the other components just like that. Yeah, now even the full stack, all the things that you mentioned, like using React, React Native from Facebook, or the backend, like you mentioned with GraphQL, and now even things are changing more faster because you can build this only like using tools like Strapi or other tools. Yeah, so exactly. I think that that part is growing too fast. And now it's, it's an advantage because you can build technologies or MVPs before maybe it took like a year and now you can build it in a month or two months. So I think that it's incredible, not only about the technology, about the infrastructure, it's also how developers can build a new code using React, React Native, Prisma, and this technology helps to, to build products really fast. So that is why may, now the products are more, you have more requirements requirements and mainly the UX uh, research and the UX designers uh, needs to to do things better because now the product ha the product is not like I don't know like a spreadsheet or something very basic that you build and you need to to do a bit more work because now it's faster also to to build uh, new products. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree, agree with it. Everything, everything is speeding up. Well, Alejandro, thank you so much for your input today. I really enjoyed talking to you, taking a little bit more technical approach. A uh, computer engineer in me was very happy to, to hear about microservices and the architecture in general. So again, uh, thank you so much, and we will see you soon uh, at the Silicon Valley Innovation Center. Thanks so much, Alejandro. Thank you so much. Have a good day.